How good is the food in Hyrule? Well, you're in luck because I'm here to... Oh, um, if you just uh, zoom out a little bit. There we go. Because I'm here to answer that question by cooking and rating all 228 recipes in Tears of the Kingdom. I've already gone ahead and gathered all of the necessary ingredients from all across Hyrule in, of course, the most ethical ways possible. Give me all of your goat butter and no one gets hurt. So here we are in our lovely outdoor kitchen. Let's just go ahead and get this fire. Ah! Now, in order to have the most cohesive diet dining experience, I'll be breaking down all of these recipes into different courses, starting with appetizers. For each recipe, I'll be rating it based on how it looks, its description, and the ingredients that go into it. So for mushroom skewer, which is literally just mushrooms on a stick, I'll be giving that 1.5 out of 5 stars. Moving on to some other mushroom appetizers, we've got even more mushrooms on sticks, or steamed mushrooms if you prefer them wet and soggy. Now, I typically wouldn't eat mushrooms just on their own like this, but if you were to eat them this way, I would recommend either the salt grilled mushrooms, the mouth-watering fragrant mushroom saute, or perhaps even the honey glazed mushrooms if you're feeling a little adventurous. If you do want to pair your mushrooms with something else though, your options include a uh, giant chunk of unseasoned meat, uh, an entire fish, or a bowl of fruit. I'm sorry, but this is just not appetizing at all. On to some other appetizers now. We've got steamed tomatoes. Now, normally I wouldn't eat soggy, unseasoned tomatoes, but apparently these have some healing properties, so we'll bump up its rating a little bit. Alternatively, we can throw a bunch of tomatoes in a pot to simmer, but I don't see any mention of medicinal effects, so this one gets a 1.4. My personal favorite of the tomato appetizers, though, is cheesy tomato simply because adding cheese to anything makes it better. Moving on to sautéed peppers now. My first impression of this recipe is that you would have to be a psycho to just munch on a plate full of spicy peppers, but it looks like sautéing them actually gives it a more sweet and spicy balance, which is actually quite pleasant. Sautéed nuts is the exact opposite. My first impression was, hey, I love nuts. <clears throat> uh, that's one of my favorite snacks, but this... I don't care if it's technically a nut, I'm not gonna start walking around chewing on acorns, pretending like it's good. Alright, next up we've got our salads, which come in a few varieties. We've got warm salad, bigger warm salad, salty warm salad, spiced warm salad, and sweet warm salad. Hey, if warm wilted greens are your thing, then power to ya, but I personally prefer the mushroom versions of these recipes. Next we've got cooked stam bulb, a vegetable I originally thought resembled an onion, but after looking at it closer, I think it's actually more like garlic. Either way, this makes for a delicious roasted vegetable. And you know what can make this even more delicious? Butter. Alright, on to a bit of a novelty item now. It's a local specialty of Kakariko Village, but I'm honestly a bit underwhelmed by the ingredients here. Unseasoned meat sludge in a hard pumpkin rind? I don't know. Onto some fresh warm wheat bread, which is always a treat. Add some melty cheese to make it even better. And finally, to wrap up our appetizer selections, we've got the bland looking, although easy to digest, veggie porridge along with an assortment of rice balls. We've got veggie rice balls, mushroom rice balls, meaty rice balls, seafood rice balls, uh, monster rice balls, and dark rice balls. Okay. How about we move on to the next course? This course is comprised of dishes where the main focus is just a bunch of meat or fish with not enough else going on to consider it an entree. Alright, first we've got our red meats with unseasoned chunks of meat on a stick, uh, even more unseasoned chunks of meat on more sticks, and then we move on to seasoned chunks of meat on a stick in three levels of increasingly improved quality and quantity. Then we've got our wet soggy meat where the goal apparently was to preserve its moisture. 
Mmm, delicious. Onto our salt grilled meats, which is one of the simpler methods of cooking meat, but will always be one of the tastiest. There's also pepper steak for all you hot Cheeto mad lads out there who like everything spicy, but in my opinion, that doesn't make the steak better. Same goes for glazed meat, where we just add a bunch of honey to unseasoned meat. For fish, we have slightly less options than the red meat. We've got our standard fish on stick recipes, our salt grilled fish, and our hot Cheeto fish. There's a couple of recipes that definitely work better with fish than with red meat. Steamed fish and honey glazed fish. All right, I'm not sure about this process of sticking a whole crab on a skewer, but as a crab enjoyer, you can't really go wrong with these recipes. I just want to know who the one fisherman is in this description and what they have against salt grilled crab. Next up is poultry, and from what I can tell, it seems like the people here only know how to prepare their birds one way. Let's just throw a whole bird into a deep fryer. And honestly, I can't blame them because that sounds delicious. Finally, we've got some combo meat and seafood plates. And uh, what happened to the rest of this fish? All right, on to soup, stews, and curries now, starting with tomato seafood soup. Oh, um, we'll just sell these real quick. All right, tomato seafood soup. Kind of a very basic chipino like dish here, but it is full of intense flavor. So we'll give it a 2.5. Next, we've got cream of vegetable soup, which is described as a simple healthy dish with no mention of flavor this time around. Add some carrots though, and all of a sudden you've got yourself a veritable taste explosion. Then we've got a few more creamy soups, cream of mushroom, creamy meat soup, creamy seafood soup, snail chowder, and and creamy heart soup, which is implied to also work as some kind of a love potion. So we'll bump up that rating a bit. We've also got monster soup, which is either loved or hated. I'm not sure who's loving bubbly purple monster gut soup, but to each their own, I guess. Same goes for the goopy dark soup, which hints at potential loss of sanity. I typically don't go for soups with side effects. Onto the stews now, and it looks like we're starting off with a pot filled with oil and a whole fish. Uh, that aroma actually does not whet my appetite. From there, we have fruity tomato stew and tomato mushroom stew. I'm not a big fan of tomato soups without a grilled cheese to go with it, but at least it's not a pot of stinky fish oil, so it's got that going for it. Now what I don't get is why the carrot soup from earlier has a taste explosion, but as soon as we turn it into a thicker stew, that goes away completely. I think we've got some kind of a soup stew conspiracy going on here. Next we've got a pretty nice looking pumpkin stew. I'm starting to think people from Kakariko only eat pumpkins. And then we've got our meat stews of increasing quality. Okay, this one is basically just a whole cow with a little bit of broth. 3.9 stars. For the monster stew and dark stew, although they do have meats, based on the information we gathered earlier with the carrot stew, these have got to be slightly worse than their soup counterparts. All right, onto our curries now, starting with a simple curry rice. Yeah, nothing to complain about here. From there, we can make it even better by adding some vegetables, our three different grades of red meat, same thing for poultry, seafood, but don't let the kids eat this one apparently. Or you could add a bunch of delicious milk melted cheese. Alternatively, if you want to make your curry worse, you could add some monster juice or a clump of dark goo. Okay, onto our entrees, the main course, if you will. Starting out with our seafood entrees, we've got the seafood uh, manure. And aside from it looking like someone just spit up a butter loogie right on top, the ingredients and presentation are quite nice. Same thing with the porgy and the salmon variations. The ratings for these just comes down to what kind of fish you prefer. I happen to be a salmon manure kind of guy. Next, we've got an assortment of risottos with a mild flavored vegetable risotto, a tan tantalizing, dare I say, seductive mushroom risotto, a couple of seafood options with salmon risotto and crab risotto, and finally a cheesy risotto, garnished of course with a giant Hylian cheese it onto the cousins of the risottos, the pilafs, which in Hyrule are apparently exclusive to various kinds of poultry or curry. Then we have a seafood paella, which is perfect if you're planning a birthday party for a fisherman. Continuing on with our rice dish, 
dishes. There's the simple but classic fried egg and rice. There's seafood fried rice and crunchy fried rice. Uh, I'm not sure which of these ingredients makes it crunchy. I just hope it's not eggshells. For you meat lovers out there, what's better than some salted seared meat over rice? Besides even more meat over rice and even more meat over rice. Yes, that's right, meat and cheese over rice. And even more meat and cheese. And even more meat and cheese to the point where it can feed an entire small village. Okay, so you know how earlier I said cheese makes everything better? Uh, honestly, I still stand by that. Moving on to our egg dishes, we have the common omelette found all across Hyrule. And like with the curries earlier, we can spruce it up with some other ingredients like vegetables or mushrooms or a bunch of cheese to make it better. Or even throw a whole crab claw in there if you're feeling crazy. Now, don't ask me how throwing some tomatoes and cheese into a boiling pot of water makes pizza, but you can't argue with the end result. Who doesn't love pizza? Next, we've got a delicious, albeit extra messy meat pie and a fish pie that looks like they just molded a crust around an entire fish. But there are definitely worse dishes out there, like this, for example, or this. All right, moving on to our dessert menu now, starting with what appears to be a steamed apple, banana, and acorns. Let's hope it gets better from here. Okay, we've got some kind of warm fruit salad soup here. Slightly better, I suppose. And if you liked that recipe, you'll definitely love this one. All right, now we're talking. Butter smothered baked apples. That's all I have to say. Okay, honeyed fruits. Makes sense, I suppose, for tartar fruits, but I generally prefer my fruits without the honey flavor. Although apples are the one exception. Sugar fried bananas, delicious. Although I would love to pair this with some vanilla ice cream. Next, we've got a few different crepes. The simple plain crepe, the fruity wildberry crepe, and the honey drizzled crepe. I personally prefer the fruit crepe the most, but you can't go wrong with any of these. On to the cakes now, starting with nut cake. As long as these aren't acorns, this is a decent enough cake, although not my preference. Instead, I would recommend either the fruit cake, carrot cake, or cheesecake. While I wouldn't recommend the monster cake, if the monster parts are strictly limited to the purple frosting, then at least you could eat around those parts. Okay, there's no eating around this one. For pies, we've got pumpkin pie, which is popular among children, especially in Kakariko if I had to guess. But if you're looking for something fruitier, there's the fruit pie or the classic apple pie. We really need some ice cream in Hyrule though. We've also got a couple of eggy desserts with egg pudding and egg tart. And a bonus pro tip for all you aspiring chefs out there, as soon as something smells good, you know it's done. Finally, there's honey candy, which is just a ball of honey but it's also the first candy that I've seen that is brimming with nutrition. So it's got that going for it. To go alongside the desserts, we've got a couple of drink options. First is the Noble Pursuit, which is described as fruit juice. But let's be real. We know why this is really popular in Gerudo Town. As for the other drink on the menu, milk. Oh, it uh, turns out we're actually not done with drinks quite yet. All of these elixirs are in the recipe book, so each of these bug frog lizard juices get a rating. And to no one's surprise, these are not good. The only one I would maybe recommend trying is the fairy tonic, but even that one has some monster parts mixed in, so I don't know. Okay, so that's it for the main portion of the menu, but we've still got a bunch of a la carte options. So let's go ahead and start cooking these up and giving them some rapid fire ratings. Now for a lot of these, oh, um, that's okay. Sometimes as a chef, your ingredients will just spontaneously fly away, nothing to worry about. Now, where did that melon go? For a lot of these a la carte options, the ratings will be very similar. There's some discrepancies based on the rarity of the ingredient, but for the most part, these are just your simple roasted fruits, vegetables, mushrooms, meats, fish, human limbs, whatever you can find. You know, there's something gratifying about taking fresh hand-picked ingredients and just roasting them over an open fire. And okay, there they go flying off again. And I am on fire. All right, let's start a new fire over here. That should give us a little more space to avoid any more accidents while we roast up the rest of the ingredients. So anyways, continuing what I was saying before, while it is gratifying to cook this way and the food itself isn't bad, it's also not great either. 
so you won't be seeing any crazy high ratings for any of these. Your best bets are these higher quality meats or any fish, but even then, none of these are seasoned and there are much better options in the recipe book. Just none of these recipes with acorns. Honestly, why are we cooking acorns? After the roasted a la carte options, we've got an assortment of frozen meats and fish that we'll prepare with our very, very cold knife here. I'm not sure why these are in a recipe book, but considering these are now basically impossible to eat, I have no choice but to give them all a 0.1. And that gets us through all 228 recipes in the recipe book. Except one. One ancient recipe that has been lost through the passage of time, rumored to have been the most tantalizingly delicious in the history of Hyrule. But through my studies as a master chef slash food inspector slash food archaeologist, I believe I have finally discovered the hidden location required to prepare this recipe. So let's ditch this joint and get moving. The journey will be long and treacherous, but it's something I must do. Hard boiled egg. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoy these kinds of videos, it would mean a lot if you subscribed, and also leave a comment on what else you'd like to see me rate or rank in the future. If you'd like to support me further, I would super appreciate if you checked out my Patreon. I post monthly behind the scenes updates there with Q&A, and more importantly, it will just help me continue to make these videos consistently moving forward. So you can find the link for that either on screen or in the description. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next video.